a gentleman who pitched in the 1945 World Series between the Detroit Tigers and Chicago Cubs. His Detroit Tigers beat my Cubs in that series, and you know what? The Cubs haven't been back to World Series since then. He also was a two-time All-Star, threw two no-hitters in the same year, Virgil Trucks. How you doing, Virgil? Pretty good, David. How are you? Good. That 45 World Series, tell me about it, because you don't see much about it because, I mean, there wasn't the TV like there is now. Well, the, the series was fine since we won, but uh, I was lucky to be in it. Just getting out of the service and time to play in it, and uh, very much enjoyed it. It's the only one that I was ever involved with. I know Billy Pierce was your teammate. He was a young 19-year-old. He pitched in a couple games that year. Pardon me? I know Billy Pierce was part of that team. Yeah, Billy was there, and uh, we had two rookies that year, Art Heidelman and Billy Pierce. And Billy did get to pitch in it, but I don't think Art did. And you picked up a win in that World Series, didn't you? Yes, I pitched the second game of the World Series and uh, won that one 4-1 to one with my good friend Hank Greenberg hitting a three-run home run. And uh, then I had to start the sixth game, and it I didn't finish that one. I went sixth inning and uh, was taken out. It was, that game went 13 innings, and... Finally, the Cubs won in the 13th. And you beat the Cubs in Game 7, right? Yeah, then beat the Cubs in Game 7 the next day. How good of a player was Hank Greenberg? Pardon me? How good of a player was Hank Greenberg? Hank Greenberg was a great ball player and a great guy. You couldn't find a better person to play ball with. He uh, was an all-out type of ball player and, and was good. I mean, he had power. Of course, a big guy like he was, he's... Six foot six. He's he didn't take any abuse from anybody. Virgil, do you remember who gave you the uh, nickname Fire Trucks? Oh yes, the sports writer in Birmingham, Alabama, where I live, and I was playing ball in uh, my first year in pro ball in Andalusia, Alabama, which was a Class D league at that time. And uh, Jack House, the sports writer, came down to see me pitch and. He saw me pitching, throwing the ball over 100 miles an hour, and my last name being Trucks, he just fitted it right in. He said, Fire Trucks would be a good nickname. I see that you were on the coaching staff for the 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates. We had Ralph Terry on several weeks ago, and he mentioned that he gave up that game-winning home run to Mazeroski in that game. And But again, he said he got over it, and two years later, he won the World Series when he got Willie McCovey to line out to end the game. What was that like when Mazeroski hit that home run? Well, it was <clears throat> it was the most terrific thing that you could happen in baseball because no one expected Maz to, to hit a home run. Uh, not in, not that he couldn't, but the furthest part of that park was over 400 feet in left center, and he hit the ball over that 400 mark and and. Uh, Tried to run the bases and about 10 fans following him. And uh, it was one of the greatest things that could happen to Pittsburgh because they hadn't been in the World Series in a long time anyway. Virgil, when you threw those two no hitters in one year, did you think it was going to be easy then? Did I put it? When you threw the two no hitters in the same year, did you think, you know what, I could do this every year? Uh, well, uh, you're talking about Nolan Ryan? You, you threw two no-hitters in one year. Yeah. Well, it, uh, it's a very odd situation. Uh, there's only four guys in the history of baseball that have done that. And fortunately, I was one of them. And I was the third one. Of course, Vandermeer is the only one that picks back-to-back uh, no-hitters. And then Adler Reynolds and myself and then Nolan Ryan. Virgil, I have to ask you, what kind of training were you doing in the Navy? Were you on a ship before you were discharged, or were you on land? I mean, were yeah, you just was, exercising? or? I was on land. I was in Norman, Oklahoma, in a rehab place as I'd been medically discharged. And I was Norman for about three months before I was discharged. And every day, there happened to be a catcher there, a minor league ball player, and he and I hooked up and... I threw to him every day for about three months uh, before the, before I joined the t- uh, Tigers for the World Series, and he was good enough to work with me. We ran a little bit. I wasn't totally in, 
a hundred percent shape when I reported to the Tigers for the World Series. Did you play a lot of baseball during the war? I know they had those tours where you had Ted Williams playing and some of the other guys when he wasn't fu- flying an aircraft. Well, we uh, we had an Army Navy World Series played in Hon- Honolulu in 1945 or 44 rather, and uh, we played the Army, which had Joe DiMaggio and uh, other major league players, but we had a totally. American League and National League players that played on the team with the Navy, and we beat them. Uh, we played them 13 games. We won 11, lost one, and tied one. So the Navy's better ball players than the Army guys. Yes, we we had a great ball club, and then Nimitz got in and decided to send us down in the South Pacific to play some games down there for the entertainment of the, the servicemen. So we went on a tour of about two weeks of playing there, and then we were dumped on Guam. And I spent uh, the rest of my time out there in Guam for uh, was a land lover, so to speak. When you played with the White Sox from 53 to 55, again, you had some great players there. Who was your manager then? Paul Richards. And he was a teammate of yours on the 45 Tigers, right? Right. Paul Richards was... Uh, a great manager, a great man that uh, he was always three innings ahead of everybody in thinking baseball. And that's why he was so successful. And then who was on the White Sox team? You would have Nellie Fox and Aparicio and those guys? Yeah, Jim Rivera. Sherm Lawler was a catcher. And Busby. And we had a we had a good ball club. Who was the best player you ever played with? Well, the be- I'd have to say Mickey Mantle. Because I got to play with the Yankees in 58 uh, last year I played and uh, was traded from the Kansas City Ball Club to the Yankees in the uh, midseason of 58. And I'd say Man- uh, Mano was one of the greatest. And who was the toughest guy you ever faced? As to be Ted Williams, which I think is the greatest hitter that ever was and ever will be. Every former player we get on seems to... Actually, I think everyone does mentions that Ted Williams was the greatest hitter. I mean, there's debate the greatest player between Mano and Mays, but they all agree on Ted Williams. Why was he such a great hitter? Well, uh, he had the greatest hand-eye coordination than any hitter I ever looked at. I mean, he just he never swung at a bad ball. I never ever once see him swing at a bad ball. And one day, a cute little story was that we were playing the Red Sox. I wasn't pitching this day, but Joe Ginsburg, the catcher, told me about it, and I know he was catching that, that particular game. And the pitcher threw four straight balls. William never swung at one of them. And Joe turned to the umpire, Bill Summers, and said, Bill, don't you think that last pitch was a strike? And Bill said, Mr. Ginsburg, Mr. Williams will let you Virgil, did back in the fifties, did your pitching coach or manager ever even talk to you about a pitch count? Were you ever even on a pitch count? Was I ever with him? Did you ever have a pitch count where they limited how many pitches you threw in a game? How many? Did they ever say, Virgil, we're not going to let you throw more than a hundred pitches in a game? Oh, I've thrown as high as two hundred pitches in a game, <laughs> and a lot of pitchers did during my time. You know, they never counted the pitchers. Uh, pitches, you just threw it until you won the game or it was over. And you got your two World Series rings. Do you wear them all the time or you have them in storage? No, I was very fortunate. I had three with three different clubs. I got one with the Yankees in 58, although I didn't, uh, I wasn't on the roster, but uh, I was with the club all the time and they gave me a World Series ring plus a uh, full share of that year. Did you ever do any of those barnstorming tours through the South to play against some of the Negro League clubs? Oh, yeah. I went on tour with Satchel Page a couple of times. And uh, the last time I went on a tour and the last time Page went on one was in 1960 before I joined the Pirates. We started out in Kansas City and went into Mexico and New Mexico and back up the coast of Bellingham, Washington, over into Vancouver. <laughs> That was a long trip. We didn't make any money, but we had a long trip. Is there a team you identify yourself most with that you played with? 
Pardon me? Is there a team that you say, you know what, I was a Tiger, I was a White Sox. Is there a team that you have, like, a fondness for? Not really. Uh, I don't think so. So you just love playing baseball? Uh, what? You just love playing baseball. Oh, I loved it from the day I was born, I think. And my dad was a great Sandlot baseball player here in the Birmingham Sandlot. And I used to watch him play, and I guess that is the most inspiring time of my life was when I was like seven or eight years old. And uh, I just took it up and I loved it and and thanked the Lord that he gave me the talent to be able to do it. You mentioned Hank Greenberg with the Tigers. There was another great Tiger player that they did a movie about, Ty Cobb. Did you ever get a chance to meet Ty Cobb? Oh, yes. I met Ty Cobb and I met Babe Ruth. Now, when I was stationed at Great Lakes uh, in boot camp, uh, Ty Cobb came up to make uh, to visit Mickey Cochran, who was the manager of Great Lakes Ball Club. And I got to meet him there and one other time in uh, California after the war. And he was a pretty decent sort of fellow. He didn't seem like the guy that was, he was accused of being, you know, hurting second baseman, sliding in and, a rough and rowdy ball player. He seemed like a very nice man. What about Babe Ruth? Babe Ruth was just as humble as a little kitten. And I got to know him pretty well. I met him when I was playing with the White Sox. He seemed to be in the White Sox ballpark all the time. There were stories that he would go from left field to basically to the hot dog stand outside the park, get a hot dog, and come back in during the game because he was so hungry. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> where he got <laughs> He eat hot dogs. He probably eat three or four games, and uh, I never brought that up to him. But some of the guys who knew him real well mentioned it and told me about. It. Thank you very much for your time, Virgil. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yes, thank you, David. My pleasure, and my wish is the best. Best of health to you too, as well. Thank you.